You might be saying, Trista, why haven't you brought up the All-Star Game yet? Where is it? Where is your hard, thought-out, savage analysis? And to that I say, every single time I try to record an All-Star Game episode, something happens. Something big happens, and then I put them all together, and I'm like, yo, this is an hour and a half. Ain't nobody got time for that. So (laughs) we're going to talk about the news and this trade deadline again. And tomorrow, I promise you, tomorrow is the All-Star episode. In fact, I'm going to record it today, and we're going to split it up. It's coming out tomorrow, folks. So this is happening, but we got to get to this trade stuff. We got to get to this trade stuff. So let's start with Portland. The departure of C.J. McCollum. Don't cry for me, Argentina. Don't cry for me. The truth is, we knew this was coming. That's the truth. So if you're worried about me, if you're checking in on me, T's and P's to me, all of the things I had to say, all of the negativity, I got it out last week. As many Sacramento Kings fans realized, uh, it was a highly cathartic experience when I went on the Sacramento Kings radio station with my boys, uh, Casey and JoJo. No, not Casey and JoJo, Casey and Damian. I am now looking forward to the future. Uh, The trade is as follows. Portland sends C.J. McCollum, Larry Nance Jr., Tony Club Trillion Snell to the New Orleans Pelicans. Yes, to the New Orleans Pelicans for Josh Hart, a 6'5", guard who for some reason New Orleans has been trying to get rid of for years now, Tomas Sadoransky, who's probably going to get bought out, Nikhail Alexander-Walker, D.D. Luzada, and a, tw- uh, a 2022, this year, protected first-round pick and two second-round picks. That is a haul, considering that, quote-unquote, sources – literally five minutes before this trade went down, said that C.J. McCollum was actually less valuable than Norm Powell on the open market. And look at what we got. Larry Nash Jr. losing him is sad. I like him. But honestly, the fact that we get a 2022 first-round pick that is only top four protected from a team that we know is probably going to be somewhere between 5 and 15 this year in the draft is encouraging. Uh, We get... If it's anything from 5 to four, to 14, we get it. We get that first-round pick, which truthfully where New Orleans is or right around where we are, which is essentially what we're going to get, right? If it ends up being 15 through 30, that goes to Charlotte, and then we get another future first. If we get the pick, then Charlotte ends up getting a future two, two seconds. So that's a very complicated way of describing this trade. Gut check, immediate reaction. This was a long time coming, dog. Like, C.J. McCollum and Damian Lillard were a backcourt that, as a Portland Trailblazer fan, we knew had, like, no upside, no contending ability. Two guys who were undersized and, like, basically a similar versions of the same guy. Neither played great defense. Some would – C.J. would disappear in stretches. I knew he was gone, gone. When we were playing Denver in the first round of the playoffs last year, and uh, he had a pass sent to him where he was in the corner, a uh, three corner spot, and he stepped out of bounds, and that was uh, that was that, you know, to to basically lose the series for us. Him and the Robert Covington uh, rim check dunk, both to lose the series. Uh, it is no surprise that both of those men are gone. Like, it is no surprise that this has been coming. We knew that CJ needed to be moved for a while now, and now the Band-Aid's ripped off. He is gone. I didn't know if we could move him. $30 million a year, it's a lot for an undersized two-guard. But New Orleans, uh, David Griffin apparently completely hated it in New Orleans, hasn't spoken to the media since October. Uh, He's doing whatever he wants. It's just vibes out there. And we found a way to move him for a lot. Second reaction. Wow, we get multiple first-round picks in a year. I haven't seen that in I don't even know how long. 
truthfully. Like, I don't – we haven't had our own first-round pick in years. We had to steal a second-round pick. We had to move things around just to get a second-round pick last year. And it was a mid- to late second-round pick, folks. Like, we haven't had picks in forever. So if you're, if you're a Portland fan and you're like, listen, I need to rebuild, I need to get some things going, we need to retool – and you get a guy like Joe Cronin who actually cares about having draft picks, unlike Neil Olshay who thought that they were just like a garbage asset, then thank the Lord. What was it? Jesus Christ the Lord is born. What was it uh, Charlie Brown said? Christ the Lord is born. That's it. I love having two lottery picks. Literally just started running draft scenarios in my head about who we could get. Like, could we get Johnny Davis from Wisconsin? Could we get Kendall Brown, Keegan Murray from Iowa? Could we end up having two firsts in that mid-first round, trade those two for fucking Chet Holmgren, second coming, little white KD out there on the perimeter, skinny seven-footer, hitting threes? Who knows? Now we've got a $20 million traded player exception. We've got $60 million in cap space. We are pushing P right now. We are pushing P right now. We could trade those picks we could end up getting Ben Simmons with that money. This is the first time in God knows how long the Blazers has had roster flexibility. We have been in cap hell. We have been in, in roster hell. We have had no picks. We've been basically the Los Angeles Lakers without LeBron and AD. Like, no moves. Like, you stale mate. Somehow we are out of that. Like it's it's like darkest before the dawn, they say. And thank God, like I st- I'm starting to see the sun kind of creep up over the hills. You know what I mean? It's been dark for a long, long time. Uh, only drawback is that this free agency class, outside of Harden and Kyrie, who we will never get, um, is pretty sus. Uh, Brad Beal also is probably the only realistic candidate. Uh, and we'll talk about this moving forward when we talk about the Sacramento Kings getting uh, uh, Arvita Sabonis' son, Domana Sabonis, uh, that that is a possibility for once. Beal is the only reasonable possibility that I see. Dame and Beal like each other. They like to talk. They play with one another very well, I think. Uh, but truthfully, I, I'm, I'm sus on the fact that Bradley Beal probably doesn't want to play in Portland. Um, but uh, if you end up getting someone like Beal, what do you do? with our man, Anthony Simons, who it looks like the Blazers basically blew up the roster to sign in the offseason. What do you do then? Because they're going to need to play them. Do Dame and Anthony Simons end up playing together? I don't know. Like, I reached out to some people about the concept of Anthony Simons and Dame Lillard sharing a backcourt together, and I had no response. So that does not tell me <laughs> that does not tell me that, that is happening 100%. Uh, here are some other free agents that I'd like the Blazers to pursue. Miles Bridges. Don't think we're going to get him, but the Hornets had a chance to lock down Miles Bridges with a rookie extension, and what do they do? They offered him $15, $15 million a year over four years, and he laughed in their faces and made some rap videos. And now he is balling out. He is set to make max money, and a max deal for Bridges would be five years, $172 million, which is what Shea got in Oklahoma City. And the Hornets... I don't know if they want to do that deal. Hornets can exceed the cap to re-sign them, but they already valued them at less than half of that before the season started, and there's really no indication that this team will want to go deep into the luxury tax to keep them because Michael Jordan is cheap as fuck. Good for him. He's got a lot of money. He's not re- really willing to part with that money in the, in the luxury tax. 2022-2023 for the Hornets already sees $98 million on the cap sheet, and that is before picking up Plumlee and Ishmith's options, which would bring them to around $113 million. Projected salary cap for next season is $119 million. Is Charlotte willing to go that far over the cap? I do not know. I think he would be awesome in Portland, though. I would love him there. Also, Gary Payton II. I like as a potential little sneaky pick for Portland. Listen, in addition to whoever gets the bulk of the Blazers cap money, I think Gary Payton at around $10 million a year would be good for him. It would be good for us. He is one of those players who is versatile, like a Lou Dort. He can defend. He can dunk. He can shoot a little bit. He is sneaky valuable. Golden State probably can't pay him. 
Uh, he's only waking one million, uh, one point nine million right now, and Golden State is so deep, so deep into the luxury tax, put her ass to sleep. You know what I'm saying? Peyton commands say three, thirty years, thirty million. The Warriors end up paying ninety million dollars for Gary Payton for him. That is not happening. No chance. It's a Kelly Oubre situation. And I do not think they do that again. I'd love to wait a year for Lou Dort, uh, but he's going to be a free agent in two years. Peyton, though, is a nice little piece as a replacement for that. Other free agents that make sense for me, uh, Chris Boucher. Don't think we're going to get him. Toronto loves him. He's a, a long, versatile guy who can shoot the three. Oregon grad, nice kid. That's a Jimmy Patos reference. Oregon grad, nice kid. Play for Dana Altman. Uh, nice kid. Lonnie Walker, the fourth. I like him as well. I'm not sure if uh, Greg Popovich and the Spurs will let him go, but we'll have to see. Love Jordan Awara. Tough. All these guys, gritty, tough, like can do multiple things, play multiple positions. Juan Toscano Anderson I like as well. I'm not sure what Golden State's going to do with him. Caleb Martin from the Heat. Really like him as well. He's been balling out. Two-way guy. Ended up getting a full-time contract with them. And on top of that, right before we ended up recording this podcast, as I was pulling in onto the street, Sam Amick at The Athletic tweeted out, Portland could potentially still be a player in the Ben Simmons sweepstakes if he does not get traded at the deadline. And you know what, folks? Fucking love that now. We don't have to do anything for him. We could just trade some first for him. I like that. We got some first. We got some seconds. We have now got three seconds and two firsts from these trades that we just made. Woo-wee. I know it's hard to maintain any sense of optimism, but I'm trying so hard in 2022. I am. I am. I'm smiling on purpose. I'm pushing P. I'm trying to stay away from being cynical. You know what I mean? Like, manifest your reality. And in Portland, it is dark. And I'm just not just talking about, like, the general weather patterns for nine months where it's just gray and rainy all the time. I'm talking about, like, the franchise. I don't even know if this – I don't even know if this owner wants our team. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know. All these things are in disarray. But what I do know is Joe Cronin has got some big balls for an interim GM. And now he's got more assets to play with. Fuck, I am excited. Unlike the Norm Powell deal, I think the Blazers got about as much for CJ McCollum as they possibly could. And now that that Band-Aid has been ripped off, it is time, folks, to get to work. Because they've said that they're building around Damian Lillard, and I don't quite see that yet. <laughs> Being honest, don't quite see that yet. They've got $20 million in TPE, $60 million in cap space, lots of building blocks. Let's see if they follow through. Cautiously optimistic.